fortunately today I've got a world-renowned dove breeder. Uh, I'm trying to convert him back to pigeons. I got Mr. Gary Landry of Arcadia Avery's in Franklin, Louisiana. Franklin, Louisiana. Nice to see We've you. We've been meeting each other on the phone for a while. We finally got a chance. Yeah, finally got a chance to look at you. And you picked me out by the box I had. <laughs> Ain't that something? By the shipping box. That's terrible. <laughs> Well, talk a little bit about these doves we got. We're in the dove section right now. Tell me about some of these birds we're looking at. Well, there's a variety of birds that were brought here today, doves. Most of them are, are domestic doves like ringnecks and diamond doves. Those are the, are the two most popular of the domestic doves. But there are also a lot of exotics that were, you know. Well, tell me here. a little bit about the diamonds. I know you've had those for years. Smallest uh, domestic dove in the world, literally. Uh, Many, many color varieties, breeds very easily, even a small cage indoors. So a perfect beginner bird for just about anybody. And actually, I shouldn't relegate it to just a beginner bird because many dove fanciers who've been with doves for decades specialize in diamond doves. In the colors. In the stuff. colors, many different colors of diamonds. Right, right, right. Well, I've had some, in fact, I've got some now i talked to you about. And the ringnecks, everybody's pretty much familiar with the ringnecks, and the, and the white doves are just an albino ringneck, right? right? Okay. Now tell me about some of these other birds. Tell me about the ones you bought today. Oh, what, well. What is, what is the name of that? Today I bought uh, several pair of pygmy ground doves, which is considered to be the smallest of all doves on the planet, native to Mexico. Uh, it's a very, very tiny bird, about three inches long. Uh, so I'm anxious to, to work with that again. I haven't seen it offered for a long time. Really, really, yeah. that's good. Uh, what else? And I bought uh, some Peruvian ground doves. Uh, it's interesting because uh, the bird's also known as a croaking ground dove. It doesn't coo like a dove. It actually makes a croaking noise like a frog. So the, the call is totally bizarre. <laughs> right. Zebra dove, tell me about it. Well, that is, that is one of the most melodious of all doves. Uh, the, the call actually sounds artificial. If you heard it from a distance, you would swear someone's playing a flute. Uh, it's so popular in Southeast Asia that they hold huge competitions for song only, and you can't imagine uh, the, 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 the spectacle to see one of those competitions. Well, so each bird has this, a little difference in his tone? And they, and they select and train them to sing, uh, and, and really, the, those competitions are based on the quality of the song. How about that? Are you familiar with the trumpeter, the Arabian trumpeters yeah. and the tie lappers? Yes. Well, they, you know, the pigeons, they got that. And they vary from individual to individual, right, too. Right, right. So I guess that's the same thing. Well, actually, uh, I've heard uh, some sound recordings from Southeast Asia, and, and they are, the, these zebra doves can be quite different. Right. And then there's one more, the emerald dove or the green wing em dove? Yes, emerald or green wing dove. Uh, metallic green wings, uh, unlike anything you see on, on any domestic pigeon, or for that matter, rarely seen on any other types of doves. This one has metallic, shimmering green wings. Beautiful bird. Yep, yep. And uh, then you, the ones you trying to raise the most is tell us I, about that well, bleeding heart dove. I, yes, I, two species, right? I, I've been sort of specializing on bleeding bleeding hearts for about 35 years. Really? Yes, I got my first ones in 1973. Good gracious! And uh, the good you thing you were still what were you in the kindergarten then? <laughs> <laughs> I wish, I wish. Well, you know the good thing about bleeding hearts. I'm not kidding you. They live forever. The first one I ever bought. I kept that bird for 28 years. That's, really? un that's unbelievable. And uh, they, they breed well. They're, you know, they're not beginner birds, uh, but once they're established, uh, they breed for a very long time. And uh, I really do and enjoy there's two, them. There's two species, right? So they, yes, they all come from the Philippines and every island in the Philippines has their own bleeding heart variety. We only have two of those in the in the U.S., the Luzon, which is a fairly common one, and the Bartlett, which is a slightly rare one. Luzons lay two eggs per nest, Bartlett's lay one egg per nest, and um, I have both, but I'm struggling to raise Bartlett's. They're, they're not very cooperative. They lay right. well, but they're not good parents. Not good parents. Well, you're working on that, too. That's, That's right. right. That's right. Gary, I appreciate you talking to us. Pleasure. Man, it's a pleasure. It's great to finally meet you. Same here. We're going to be friends forever. <laughs> Hi, this is Jerry Gagne, Foy's Pigeon Supplies, oldest pigeon supply company in the United States. When Danny Joe approached us about being a part of this great project, we were really excited. 
If you're looking for pigeon supplies, if you're looking for pigeons, I hope you'll give us a call. Foy's Pigeon Supplies, we're on the Internet, just type in Foy's. Or if you'd like to call us, it's 1-877-355-7727. Ask about our 204-page all-color catalog. We'd be glad to send it to you. Color Pigeon Loss, featuring 28 breeds of fancy pigeons, high-performance Turner Rollers. We have birds available at all times. Capuchins, Saxon Monks, Saxon Priests, Swiss Crescents, Ice Pigeon, Saints, Frillbacks, Archangels, Starling, Figuritas, Old German Owls, Chinese Owls, Satinets, Swallows, Saxon Shields, and much, much more. For breed availability, visit www.colorpigeons.com. For purchasing, pricing, and shipping info, call toll-free 1-800-527-0918. Okay, the first thing we're going to talk about today is the three colors. Now, in pigeons, people say there's just many, many colors. Well, the facts are there's only three colors. And there's an order of dominance in those colors, and it's sex length. But we'll just, we just want to talk about the colors now. The first bird here is an ash red. Now, I apologize for them being in the moat, but that's just nature, and it is what it is. But this is an ash red, which is, is on the highest order of dominance. This is a blue, and this is brown. Now, you have these three colors, nothing else. What makes these these other colors that we visually see is modifiers, but you need to understand that there's only three, ash red, blue, and brown. Now, what may, the reason they call this ash red and, and what sets it apart is when you, I'll get it out later, but when you look at, at the end, at its tail and when its flights, right on, this tail is an ash color. The trailing edge on its flight is an ash color. So therefore, ash red. Now. It is the highest order of dominance. Now, these birds are sex length, and it's something the color is sex length. We'll talk about that later. But red will, a, a cock bird can carry two chromosomes. The hen only carries one. That's what makes it sex length. But this bird, this cock, he is ash red visually, but he can carry blue or he can carry brown because there's two genes, or he can be double factor red. So. This bird, he could actually produce this or this depending on what his hidden color is. Now, you move down to blue. Blue is right in the middle. Blue is dominant over brown. If you see a blue bird, it's either blue on the other gene or it carries brown. It cannot carry red. So what I'm saying is if this was a cock and it being blue, it could carry brown. This is a brown bird. Now, if you got a brown bird, what you see is what you get. Because since it's the lowest order of dominance, if it's a hen, naturally, it will be the color that you see. But it being a cock, it can only carry brown. So, ash red, blue, brown. Okay, now we'll talk about sex length in a few minutes, but, but before you move any further in genetics, you definitely need to understand, and I, I, I keep repeating myself, but if you don't understand ash red, blue, and brown, everything else is modifiers, this is highest order of dominance, this is next, and this is next, don't move on until you understand that totally. Now, the, on the end out here, you'll see a recessive red bird. Now, the reason I got it out here is I've told people before, you can't raise a, a, a red, an ash red bird out of two blues. and Inevitably, somebody will come back and say, aha, I got you. I did raise a red bird out of two blues. And what it will be will be a recessive red, which is another gene. And then people, the next question, they say, well, how do I determine if it's recessive red or if it's ash red? I'm going to get these birds out and, and show you. I've already explained it, but seeing is, is everything. Now, when you hold this bird up, it's got white flights, but you can see the ash you can see the ash tail. I mean, it, it is, and, and if you get a T-check red, it could be much redder than this, but it will have the ash on it. Now, the recessive red, if you ever have a question as to is this bird ash red or recessive red, this is kind of an extreme on the other side as far as dark. But if you hold that bird up and you pull his flights out and they're red all the way to the end or his tail, 
is red all the way to the end. That bird is recessive red, it's not ash red, so there's a total difference. And the truth being, this bird is a blue bird underneath this ash with this recessive red. That will be explained later. But the final word, order of dominance, ash red, blue bar, brown. That's all the three colors. Everything else is modified. Muri Nagel, better known as Dr. Pigeon by his friends, is known by his one eye cold treatment. It's called one drop, one time. It only takes one drop, it only takes one time. Every breeder needs at least one bottle of one drop, one time to keep in their loft for those nasty eye colds. They're available at Boys Pet Supply, New England Pigeon Supply, and Pro Flight Supply. And remember, the next time you buy pigeon supplies, be sure to include one bottle of one drop, one time. Show you here today is how to dust your birds for, for lice, with feather lice or whatever. It's an uh, idea, it's not my idea. It actually came out of a book I read about, uh, I used to raise finches, and it was a way to dust finches. And I tried on pigeons and it works just fine. All you do is you get a bag, a paper bag, or whatever you want to, and you put you some 10% seven dust down in the bottom of it. You take that bag, you put that whole pigeon in there, and you shake him up in there. You take that bird out, and you put him back in the loft that he came out of. And you do them all like that. When you get through, you got them all dusted. Personally, you also dusted your loft, because when they go to flapping their wings and, and shaking the dust off of them, it goes all over everything. It's a good tip, save you a lot of time. Another thing you can do is you can put just a little bit of seven dust in some sand and put that in your nest bowl. I hope that helps you out. Until next time, I'm Danny Joe Humphrey, and we'll see you with the pigeons. Thanks for watching Color Pigeons and More, the Pigeon TV show that covers all aspects of the pigeon hobby. Today's show has been brought to you by Foy's Pet Supplies since 1887, America's oldest bird supply company. Dr. Pigeon Proven Pigeon Products, 18 to choose from. Color Pigeon Lofts, featuring 27 show breeds and high performance rollers. Be sure to tune in for our next episode. Be looking for us right here on the web.